I'm here to do my senior thesis research with Aaron O'Day and a other group of scientists here about a Caribbean fish community about 100,000 years ago. We found a fossilized coral reef which was exposed by a construction project that has very recent fossils in terms of geologic time that could show us what the Caribbean was like before humans arrived but after most evolutionary and environmental changes happened. So what I'm hoping to do is sift through the sediment in this reef and take out the remains of fish to look at what kinds of fish were there, and in particular, what, whether there were more top predators then than there are today. So this used to be a um, this used to be entirely mangrove. So the idea that we have here is that this is essentially a, a, a an example, a window into the into the past of what reefs used to be like in Bolkus before humans arrived. And our Lexus project is, will aim to reconstruct what that community looks like, the fish community using the otoliths, perhaps the coral communities looking at these cervicornis, and really try and determine a baseline for what the Caribbean should look like in this region for any of the effects that humans have had on it. So. The neat thing about this site is that this construction project exposed something which normally would be fairly far underwater. So to get fossils as recent that are marine, they are deposited on the seafloor. So we would have to dive and come up with some complicated method of digging something out of the seafloor. But here, thanks to this project, these fossils were kind of taken from the bottom of the ocean and dumped on land. So we have a great opportunity to sort through very recent fossils, 100,000 years old, with our bare hands and not have to use any complicated equipment. Why don't we just do one for that? So you hold those to get together and I'll shovel it in here about that. So this is what we took with a shovel from our site and sieved it to get rid of everything smaller than two millimeters, which is most of the sediment. And then we took out the big chunks of coral. You can still see some of them in here. And now we're going through this by hand, which is all around the size of an otolith. They're between 2 and 10 millimeters, to try to look for them. Now you can see this has pieces of coral in it, it has shells, it has a lot of other marine remains. So our job is sort of finding a needle in a haystack and finding the otoliths wherever they are within all of this. How many do you need? I'd like, ideally, to have a few hundred. Because this is such a diverse area, even if with a few hundred of them, you might only get a few for each type of fish. Mm -hmm. So as it is, what we'd like to do is classify them into broad categories of top predators, middle predators, etc. Even with that, though, a bigger sample size is always better for something like this, where we don't quite know what we'll find. So hundreds would be great. If we can. This is pretty much what we have. Um, I think one of the reasons photolists are hard to study is that they're quite hard to identify. This, to my knowledge, is the first guide, and it was based on Caribbean fish collected in Venezuela by a collaborator of Dr. O'Day's um, Ananjal Aguilera. And he has really great pictures of these otoliths, and ideally, once we get a lot of them, I'll just go through this book, compare them all, and hopefully get very good at identifying them quickly. So you can see they're very small. This one is, that line is one millimeter, so that one's just a few millimeters across, but they're very distinctive if you look between the different ones. We know that humans have fished a lot of top predators in particular very quickly over the past decades and even centuries. One of the popular methods is sort of based in fishery science, to go back to the earliest fisheries records and see what kind of fish people were catching and extrapolate from that how many fish there probably were. And most of those have shown really precipitous declines, <laughs> sort of on the order of 80 or 90 percent of every kind of top predator across the board around the world. So even though those don't really compare directly to paleontology, it does show you that even on such a small scale of time, you know, of decades, when these fisheries records began, the oceans have completely changed. When, when you say humans arrived, is, is, do you mean 10,000 years, 5,000 years, 2,000 years? So there's really 2, strong years? evidence that, that as soon as humans arrived, they start influencing the, the composition, the, at the average size of, mm -hmm. the, of wild fish populations. And they're, you know, we're extremely clever species that are, is able to exploit mm -hmm. these these uh, these sort of resources in a really efficient way.
that's one of the reasons why we do so well. And obviously that has an effect or an impact, as you guys like to say.